Hi guys! I am very excited for this topic because this is our last topic in Kansai, uh, in Kansai 1 to 8, which is Software Engineering 1. And hopefully, you have learned a lot about our course entirely. Okay, today, uh, we're going to learn about a design element pertaining to human-computer interaction. If you can still recall in our previous lessons, um, interface classes may be identified to manage a user's access to a class operations. Okay, so we will try to elaborate later on on those and the graphical user interface that is associated with them. Also, this is still a form of elaboration of the interfaces that had, uh, that had been identified in your component level design. So without the component level design, we cannot proceed to the interface design. And also just to inform you guys that um, since we're talking about the human and the computer interaction, there is what we called a course that has the same name, which is human and computer interaction. Hopefully you will be, uh, hopefully you will be taking uh, this course in your, um, in your succeeding semester. Okay, some of the topics, by the way, in our discussion in the interface design will somehow cover the general concepts of that course. Okay, so let's get started. So if we will talk about interface design, um, interface design creates an effective communication medium. One moment. Okay, uh, it creates an effective communication medium between the human and also the computer. Okay, sometimes um, software engineers um, take for granted this very important aspect in software development because for them, um, they will focus only on the programming aspect but not the user experience. And that is why there are some companies created across function development teams. Um, user experience or the UX designers who are not necessarily programmers are hired to help in this aspect. I had an experience before that our manager hires a fine arts or into design or arts graduates um, who will mainly focus on developing the GUI or the user interface of the system. So why is it important? So why is the interface design it's so important? For starters, a good design encourages usability of the software. Okay? Users can get easily frustrated using a poorly designed interface regardless of computational power or its content. Okay, so again, it should, we need to make sure if we will try to develop a design, it should be usable and the user gets, uh, get easily frustrated for the poorly designed interface. Okay, so we have a good example here for the poorly designed interface. I know that we can all agree or somehow can agree that SAIS has, uh, is a good example for a poorly designed interface, right? I know that you can feel what I can feel with SAIS, right? I know that SAIS was derived from um, Oracle system. That is why the interface of this it is actually like the back end of the PHP my admin or our database, right? For those computer science teachers or for those students who have been uh, exposed or they also uh, they have experience already with this type of design, I believe that you can follow through the links and the buttons. However, I am quite concerned about those users who are not exposed to this kind of interface, right? So I'm really sorry, Saez. <laughs> so the UX or the user experience uh, makes a lasting impression that will profoundly, uh, profoundly motivate the users in adopting the software. If we make the interface intuitive, um, it will be easier for the users to navigate and use the application users will generally um, be happy about it 
right? That is our goal, to make our user happy or satisfied, okay? Plus, a poorly designed user interface will force users to commit mistakes and we don't want, we really don't want garbage in our database. So this aspect, it's so important that is, uh, that is this aspect is actually very important that an entire course is created to discuss the um, to discuss the psychology the creativity and technicality behind the user experience design for now i'm simply going to put uh, to point out um, some design principles that you may follow in your software projects okay So technicality, um, oh, sorry, in, um, technically, um, interface design depicts information flow in and out of the system and how this information is communicated entirely. It is just like you design your own place. I am talking about the process of choosing what paint color or design of the wallpaper of your wall and etc. I believe I discussed this kind of metaphor in the architectural design topic, right? So if we will go back again to the interface design, interface design should allow communication with the end users about the user interface. Internal, like this one, internal interfaces between the various design components and lastly, the external interfaces to other systems, devices, networks, or other external entities. But actually, it's not necessarily that you will have uh, um, you will have this number two, okay? But for the most part of my discussion, basically, guys, I will talk about the user interface design. Okay, let's proceed. Um, these are um, the golden rules. Um, the golden rules form the basis for a set of user interface design principles that guide this important aspect of software design. First, the user should place in control. Next, we should reduce the user's memory load. And lastly, we need to make the interface consistent. I believe that I keep on reminding everyone that we need to be consistent, right? It's not only in the modeling part, but also in the um, in creating our interface. So let's uh, uh, let's see these principles. Okay. Okay. First principle: place the user in control. So we need to define the interaction modes in a way that, that does not force a user into unnecessarily or undesired actions. Here's a common user requirement um, elicited that relates to interface design. What I really would like is a system that reads my mind. Um, it knows what I want to do before I need to do it and makes it very easy for me to get it uh, to get it done that's all just that okay so basically what we're talking here is we need to make sure that the user has its own control um, to our to our project or to the system that we're trying to develop and of course um, there are some cases that the software will give you an idea what to do next right the user needs uh it really good it's really good by the way guys that um if you will create a system that will read the mind of the users that's why it's really necessarily that you have a very good analysis on that part okay so most interface constraints and restrictions that are imposed by a designer are intended to simplify the mode of interaction but for whom right are those constraints or or are, are those constraints for or against the user experience so let's take a look at netflix ui design or the uh, user interface design 
Netflix is obviously trying to boost engagement and attempts to increase view by automatically playing the movie preview every time the mouse is hovered over the movie or the TV show. Um, sometimes it really gets annoying when all I want to do is to read the details. But I, will, uh, but I am forced to watch the movie preview, right? I believe we also have this kind of experience with YouTube, right? It's really good that there is actually what we call advertisement. Uh, there's also skip ad, but there are also um, there are also videos that the user doesn't have any control because you really need to wait for that advertisement to finish before you can proceed watching your video, right? Um, there are also cases um, when the design puts in objects or requires some actions to be done that are necessary so that the user is compelled to buy or download something and want it. I know you also experience this one when you try playing some games. Um, you, are forced, uh, you are forced, by the way, to watch a certain ad or another game of that uh, you will be uh, you are forced to watch the certain ad of another game right i know after 10 seconds or so the user will have the option to close the ad and continue with the game you are playing but again it is really so annoying right alternatively others would hide or would not make available uh, available some actions that are desired by the user so again, we need to make sure that um, we need to avoid these unnecessary or undesired actions. Let's proceed. Next principle, this is still under the, uh, it's still under um, user is in control. So we need to provide, um, uh, we need to provide flexible interaction. So because different users have different interaction preferences, choices would be provided. It is a must, especially for shopping cart websites or applications whose target audience are coming from mobile. So for example, if, you're, if we will talk about responsive designs, make sure that if you will develop a software or a, an application, it's not only intended for mobile, right so especially in, uh, in e-commerce your platforms should not be intended only in in online or in web uh, in websites but also be intended as well in mobile app so um so that you will have a broad market okay and also make sure that the interface or the responsive interface that you have chosen in your website it shouldn't be the same as your um as your uh, in your mobile app you know what i'm saying so for example if there is a scroll bar intended only in the website make sure that in your mobile app it should be different if you can see it here, this is the website part, and this is the app, mobile app. Here, there, you can see scroll bars and all, right? It's not flexible, right? I have a good example here, one moment. Okay, here. So we created this, um, um, we created this grading system in UP High School. This is actually intended for the teachers not to submit a manual um, grading sheet to the um, to the high school clerk, but we will submit it directly to the website so that the clerk will only print it. Okay, so now the teacher will see the assigned subjects. So basically, the teacher will only see. Uh, th uh, for example, the those subjects were assigned to them. So, for example, the teacher one has um, three preparations. So, from TLE seven, TLE nine, and values eight, or values education eight. So, 
if you can see here, if we will click the TLE9, it will show all the um, names. It will show all the names of the students who are enrolled to this subject. If I will, if the teacher will also click TLE7, it will also show, um, and uh, it will also show the names of the student who uh, who are actually enrolled to that specific subject. So if you will click this TLE7, you can also see the summary of grades. So aside from inputting their grades, the teacher will also see the summary of grades in one form only. You know what I mean? So basically, we need to create a system that will only rotate or the interaction should be in one page only rather than creating a software that will um, that will um, that will give you an interaction by clicking the link then proceed to the next web page next web page again right so it's so annoying and it's so exhausting uh, for the users so make sure that you will create or you will provide a flexible interaction. Next. Next principle, it's still under the user is in control. So we need to allow user interaction to be interruptible and undoable. Um, even when involved in a sequence of action, the user should be able to interrupt the sequence to do something else without losing the work that had been done. The user should also be able to undo any action. This is the part where the cookies, uh, actually, this is the part that we can use the cookies maybe to store data temporarily or something else, right? So let's use the Cobja created by the team of Professor Eileen Vicente. Um, we actually, the Cobja, it's, I believe it is not only intended for the UP um, faculty or staff, but also intended for the entire um, Cebu province. Uh, hopefully, this subject will be implemented so that we have a very good um, a monitoring um, of for those um, um, patients or for those um, residents here in Cebu um, who, ha uh, who have who um, have COVID. Right. So if you will check this one. Um, you will see here um, the interaction, right? Um, you will see here the, uh, for example, this is the start until the end. So for example, I'm already in the second part. If I want to go back, if I want to go back, even though that I already inputted my name here, if I will go back and I will um, I will continue, I can still see the name that I inputted. That should be also the same in the other parts. Uh, we use, or actually I use this um, example because this is, uh, this is actually a good example of undoable, right? So no need for the user to undo or no need for the user to retype it because um, the cookies are actually temporarily stored the data entry that the user entered okay so this is a good example so we will proceed to the next principle again this is still under the user is in control we need to design for direct interaction with objects that appear on the screen so the user feels a sense of control when able to manipulate the objects that are necessarily or that are necessary to perform a task in a manner similar to what would occur if the object were a physical thing so for example this is our object so this is a folder right so an application interface that allows or for example uh, an application interface that allows a user to drag a document into the trash is an implementation of the direct manipulation. So basically, if you will drag this folder directly to the trash bin, you are just like 
it's actually similar to what you are doing in a physical thing, right? This is also related to the concept of natural user interface. So again, we have natural, sorry, natural user interface. Okay. It is the idea of exploiting our natural senses to perform tasks using the computer or any device. This actually increases the intuitiveness of the, of the interface because the controls actually mimic how humans would naturally interact with the object. It also allows the user to interact with content instead of interacting with interface objects only. For example, instead of using scroll bars, we might want to use a flipping or swiping gesture to, me, uh, uh, to move to the next or to go back um, um, to this specific website, right? Uh, basically, if you will try to read a book, however, uh, you, even though that you don't have a physical book, I know, uh, I know that you are flipping and going to the next pages. You can also do that one in your iPad, right? All you need to do is to swipe it to the left if you want to go, if you want to continue reading, or you can swipe it to the right if you want to proceed, okay? So since people nowadays are exposed with their cell phones, I believe that you also have noticed that in Mac OS X updates right now, most of the features available in the iOS are now being used in OS X. Here, uh, I, I'm actually a Mac user, so I've noticed that um, the things or the controls or the interactions that I can do on my phone can be accessible also in my MacBook, right? So this is actually still in the principle of the user is in control. Make sure the design is actually uh, an interaction with the objects that will appear on the screen. Okay, so take note that we are making a design that will make sure or that will actually similar to the manner we actually, uh, that will occur if the object were a physical thing. Okay, let's proceed. Here, uh, we are already in our next principle or in our second principle which is to reduce the user's memory load, okay? So reduce demand on the short-term memory. The interface should be designed to reduce the requirement to remember the past actions, inputs, and results. Remember that the more a user has to remember, the more error-prone the interaction will be. So the user will try, uh, will somehow overlook some data or some overlook some uh, some information that that actually our system needs right so i have an example here which is the uh, mobile app for gcash so of course i always have a monthly responsibility to pay my bills so our uh, water bill it's actually bp water works so if you will access this one, there is an option. Uh, you have the user needs to enter the account number, the account name, the amount, and also your email address. But if the, actually this is your first time, if you can see this one in your first time registration or the first time you will try to pay your bill in the GCash mobile app. But in the next slide here you can see this you can actually save it as your favorite so that if you will try to um, to pay again your water bill in the next month your account number was already saved your account name your email ad also um, reminder when then after that you can actually click the pay bill so based on this good feature in Gcash, you are actually reducing the short-term memory. 
so there will be no chances or um, a quite small chance that the user will overlook or the user will have an error um, entering the data you know what I mean right okay let's proceed next principle this is still under to, uh, to reduce the user's memory load we have to establish meaningful defaults okay defaults are the values or settings that comes out of the box um, they might seem like much but defaults uh, and their designers uh, hold immense power they make decisions for us so basically it has a decision support right default actually should be what the majority of our users will want okay also by using smart defaults like the geo, ge, uh, geolocation and also automatic calculation for example the geolocation it, this is actually used by grab or um, grab car um, grab delivery or the grab application itself it actually allows um, your application to get your GPS right so I believe there will be a project here one of your teams uh, one of the teams here in Kamsai 128B uh, will also use this geolocation hopefully you have this kind of default so that the uh, so that the user will not uh, will not keep on searching for their location so it will get default already okay don't use defaults for input fields that require user attention attention such as signing up to newsletters or accepting terms of uh, accepting terms of use of course this is a no-no we need to make sure that the user doesn't have any defaults for this part okay accepting terms of use or terms of agreement right and also you aside from the grab you can also use this one in your um, Cebu Pacific Air so this is actually the website uh, in Cebu Pacific Air um, you can see here Manila because basically this is the default or this is the most commonly used uh, uh, this is the most commonly location used by the user so if you will sign in it will automatically um, um, check uh, what location uh, is this user most um, selected here that one okay also take note that defaults are uh, also allows us to make sure that our database will always contain data and not null okay this is important if we will use the data later on for analysis defaults uh, may uh, will make sure that our data set does not have a missing uh, or will not have a missing uh, missing values okay so I believe that there are other actually a lot of applications already that uses the geolocation or the defaults and also the calculation so for example how about um, putting in your age I'm uh, sorry putting in only your birth date okay instead of putting in your birth date also your age it's good that you will um, you will generate or automatic calculation for your age when the user will only put the date right for example the birthday uh, of the user it's actually February um, 25 1992 so it will automatically calculate it that the user um, the age of the user it's 28 for example okay next next principle it's still under reduce the user's memory load um, the visual layout of the interface should be based on a real world metaphor for example a bill payment system should use a checkbook and check register metaphor to guide the user through a bill paying process this actually enables the user to rely on well understood visual cues 
rather than memorizing an arcane interaction sequence. An iconic example in the desktop metaphor being used to design our desktop, uh, we have our, our computer desktops actually mimic our real-life table desktop with all the notes, the folder, indexing that we do to organize our desktop. In developing an information system, by the way, guys, it would be best if the form that the users use uh, used will be the same format in your system. For example, um, if you will create an information system for new voters registration, um, make sure that the actual form that the user will fill in manually should also have the same format in the information that you will develop. It's also nice if the report that that kind of system will generate in the future will also the same format as the manual okay i will not read actually i will not proceed to the real cd uh real cd metaphor but just to let you know again um i would like to emphasize that since we are actually making sure that the user experience is still there while we're developing our system. I know that the, our users are used to this type, uh, this kind of system, which is a manual type of system. Make sure that you are not um, entirely um, changing them. So what, uh, what I'm saying is make sure that even though that they are trying to adopt or to adjust to the um, to the digital system that you're trying to create for their um, for their organization, there is still a touch of the manual system. Just like what I said earlier, it should be a mimic of what they are used to do. So we have a good example for this one, which is the um, which is the um, guitar tuner. So make sure that the that you if you will create an application or if you will create an interface like in guitar tuner um the, the actually guitar is actually there okay so you're just like playing a guitar but it's not a physical guitar but you're using the application right Next one, the last principle is making the interface consistent. All visual information is organized according to design rules that are maintained throughout, um, throughout all screen displays. So the interface should be organized hierar sorry, hierarchically. Okay, so there should be a hierarchy, right? That is information about a task as an object or an object or some behavior should be presented first at uh, first uh, at a high level of obstruction so more details should be presented after the user indicates its interest if you can see this one this is just like what i said earlier consistency consistent page design it should be something like this inconsistent you can see that the main body here it's actually okay na unta. however and the page number two it has a, the same um, design also in page number three so again we are making it consistent so it should be okay or it's really nice if you have this type of um, you uh, you will have this consistency okay